Hello and welcome back to Math 301 Combinatorics at CSU. Today we're going to be talking about solving recursions using generating functions. So if you have a recursively defined sequence, the question is, is there a closed formula for its generating function? And can that closed formula help us find an explicit formula for the nth term of the sequence? And we'll see how that works today. Let's start with an example. Let's take the recursively defined sequence, a0 equals 2, a1 equals 1, and for all n greater than or equal to 2, a sub n is a sub n minus 1 plus 2 a sub n minus 2. So this is a homogeneous linear recurrence of depth 2, and we can define a of x to be its generating function, a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared, etc. So this is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of a sub n times x to the n. So first, let's try to solve for a of x. Let's try to find an explicit formula like the geometric series formula or something similar to that. And how do we do it? Well, the method, one method is just to plug in the recursion and see if we can simplify using the recursive definition. So let's keep this recursive definition up here to help us remember what it says. And let's just try to manipulate this generating function a of x to see if we can simplify it. So writing out these terms, okay, we already know a0 is 2 and a1 is 1. So I can write those two down. And then the rest I'm going to put into a summation. It's the sum as n goes from 2 to infinity of a sub n times x to the n. Now, if I plug in a recursion for a sub n, for this is all n at least 2, so I can make that a sub n minus 1 plus 2 a sub n minus 2. And so now each of these can split up. I can make this the sum of two generating functions, the one for a sub n minus 1 and the generating function for 2a sub n minus 2. And I can factor a 2 out of all those terms as well. And so it's the sum of these two generating functions. And now these look like the almost look like a of x itself, except the indices are shifted a little bit. We have a sub n minus 1 instead of a sub n, and a sub n minus 2 instead of a sub n. So let's look at how we can write that. In fact, this one is almost the, the entire shifted sequence, except it's starting at n equals 2. So we're missing the a0 term here. We start at a1 times x to the 2. So if I want to start at, n, at a0, let's make it the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus that extra term a0x that this contains. Now this whole expression equals the summation above. So then on the right here, this sum as n goes from 2 to infinity a sub n minus 2 x to the n in the last video, we said that multiplying by x to the m shifts the sequence by m. And so multiplying by x squared, of, uh, multiplying a of x by x squared exactly gives you the sum of a sub n minus 2 times x to the n. So now we get, we get the generating function shifted by x squared. And here we have the generating function shifted by just multiplying by x. So this is x times a of x over here. And then a0 is 2. So we can put that 2 in there by just plugging in for a0. And now we get this expression, let's simplify 2 plus x minus 2x is 2 minus x. And now we can solve for a of x by putting all the a of x terms on the left. And we get 1 a of x minus x a of x is minus 2x squared a of x's. Um, and we solve for a of x by dividing both sides by 1 minus x minus 2x squared. And we get 2 minus x over 1 minus x minus 2x squared as a closed formula for a of x. So great, we solved for its generating function. But what does this tell us about the sequence? Well, the nice thing about this generating function is you might notice the denominator is a quadratic. And we can factor quadratics either by finding their roots or here by just guessing you know, and using reverse FOIL to try to factor it. So 2 minus x over 1 minus 2x times 1 plus x is what this denominator factors as. And now notice that by partial fractions, we can express this as p over 1 minus 2x plus q over 1 plus x for some numbers p and q. This is the theorem of partial fractions. And the reason we want to do this is that um, 1 over 1 minus 2x is essentially a geometric series, and so is 1 over 1 minus x with some monomial substitution plugged in. So let's first find p and q. So the way we find p and q with partial fractions is we know that when we add these fractions together, we need to get 2 minus x on the top. So p times 1 minus x plus q times 1 minus 2x is this numerator, 2 minus x. And combining like terms, we get p plus q and p minus 2q times x is equal to this generating function, 2 minus x. And two generating functions are equal if and only if their coefficients are equal. So this p plus q must be this 2, the constant term. And p minus 2q must be negative 1, because that's the thing multiplied by x. So we get this, these two equations in two variables for p and q. And now we can just solve them. So 
P, let's solve for P here is minus one plus two Q and plug it up into this, uh, plug it into the first equation. And we get minus one plus two Q plus Q is minus one plus three Q equals two. So three Q equals three by adding one to both sides. And so Q is one. And plugging in Q equals one back into this equation finally gives us P equals one as well. So we found P and Q are both one here. And now we plug that back into this expression, p over one minus two x plus q over one minus two x. And we get that a of x has this alternative form as a generating function of one over one minus two x plus one over one minus x. Now, now that we've manipulated the generating function, let's expand it again using the geometric series formula. This is just the monomial substitution of two x into the geometric series, giving you the generating function for two to the n. And this one's the monomial substitution for minus x giving minus one to the n x to the n at every term. And adding these generating functions together, we get two to the n plus minus one to the n is the coefficient of x to the n in this generating function. Finally, what that means is that since a of x is also the sum of a sub n times x to the n, these are equal generating functions. And so their coefficients must be equal. a sub n has to equal two to the n plus minus one to the n at every step, at every for every n, because the generating function is entirely determined by its coefficients. A generating function is really just a way of writing down a sequence with some x's to keep track of your sequence elements. And so it looks a little bit magical, but we've actually found this formula that we found a different way with the characteristic polynomial before. We found this polynomial directly just by manipulating generating functions. This method actually can be generalized to derive that formula for um, solving linear recurrences in terms of roots of the characteristic polynomial in general. So now you can see where this formula comes from, why the characteristic polynomial came up. In fact, the denominator is essentially um, a slight modification of the characteristic polynomial, that denominator that we factored into two factors. So generating functions are a very powerful tool for solving recurrences. And I just wanted to talk about one more example where, and this is an example where we're gonna find a closed form for the generating function, but not use it to find an explicit formula just yet. That's coming at the end of the course. So the example is the Catalan numbers. So C zero equals one and CN equals C zero CN minus one plus CN, CN minus two, et cetera, down up to CN minus one C zero for all N greater than or equal to one. So we've seen the Catalan numbers in a previous video, and this also might ring bells in terms of multiplying generating functions. The formula for multiplying generating functions was a convolution formula. And this is essentially, this recursion is essentially the convolution of the sequence C with itself. And so we're gonna see how multiplying generating functions can come in handy for solving the generating function of the Catalan numbers. So let's let C of X be the generating function of the Catalan numbers. And as before, let's start with the initial value, C0. Let's pull that out and make it sum of, as n goes from 1 to infinity, of Cnx to the n. Now, C0 is 1. And all of these Cn's, this is for n at least 1 in this summation. So I can plug in the recursion that's defined for n at least 1. And now let's see how we can manipulate this. Well, this is sort of the n minus first convolution of C with itself. And so we want this exponent to be n minus one instead of n. So we can factor out an x because we're starting at one anyway. So let's factor out an x to shift that sequence. And uh, alternatively, we can re-index instead of summing from, as n goes from one to infinity and have all these n minus ones, we start at n equals zero and make it the nth convolution times x to the n. So that's just rewriting that summation in a little bit different way. And finally, this is actually the, convolu the nth convolution of the sequence C with itself. And so that has to be the nth term in the product of the two generating functions, C of X and C of X. So we found that this simplifies to one plus X times C of X squared. And so C of X equals one plus X C of X squared. That means C of X satisfies this quadratic equation. And we can solve for C of X just using the quadratic formula. So let's put all the C of X's on one side and make it equal to zero. And so by the quadratic formula, C of X is negative B, which is one, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC is X here. So we get an X and then divided by two A, A is X. And so this looks a little bit odd because we have a plus or minus, but C of X is just one generating function. So is it plus or minus? And what does this square root mean anyway, right? So we found a closed formula, but we have to explain what it means. So square root of one minus four X 
just is defined to mean the generating function d of x for which d of x squared is one minus four x. So just like we define square root of nine to be the number whose square is nine, um, which is three, square roots of generating functions are defined in a similar way. But if I asked you what number squares to nine, you could either say three or negative three. And you have to specify that we always mean the positive number. So we also have to specify that we mean with positive first coefficient. That's just how we define which one. Is it the positive or negative square root? So we're taking the positive square root and in that case, that means d of x, if d of x squared has a constant term of one, that means d of x must have constant term one because it's positive and its square is one. And now what we can figure out whether that's plus or minus because this one here has to be canceled for this x to go into the top evenly and get a generating function. And so c of x has to be one minus the square root of one minus four x over two x. And we'll see in, in the future video later in the course how we can actually compute what this generating function square root of one minus four x is as a generating function. And we'll see that we can get the explicit formula one over n plus one times two n choose n for the Catalan numbers directly from these generating functions. And it's actually a lot easier of a proof than the difficult bijective proof that we saw in the Catalan numbers video of the explicit formula for the Catalan numbers. So there's a closed formula for the Catalan number generating function. And we also saw how we could solve linear occurrences using generating functions by getting the, that characteristic polynomial uh, equation still coming up. And now you try for a, a different recursion, find a closed form for the generating function of the sequence defined by E0 equals one and En equals the sum of the previous of all the previous terms, so En minus one plus En minus two down to E zero for N at least one. And so find a closed formula for this generating function and see if you can use it to find an explicit formula for E sub N. Um, we, we've actually seen this sequence before, but the challenge here is use generating functions and find the explicit formula. Remember that uh, multiplying by um, one over one minus X gives you partial sums and that might come in handy for using this recursion. So that's all for today and we'll see you next time.